When studying rivers and floods, many people don't realise that flooding is a natural process. So what is a flood? While in geographical terms, when a river's discharge exceeds the carrying capacity of the channel, a river will flood. The water level rises above the banks and spreads onto the floodplains, as we can see in this image. Even though this is a natural process, People can exacerbate the problem and make it much worse by many of the actions that they do. River floods can be very devastating. If we look at these photos, we can see that they can damage people's property, they can potentially uh, flood people's houses, they can damage farmland, they can disrupt industry and people's lives, and in many instances, they have the potential to kill and injure people. For us to fully be able to understand floods, we need to understand hydrographs. And I'm going to show you how to construct and analyse hydrographs. A hydrograph is a record of river discharge over a period of time. It is a graphical representation of this. And one of the most important factors, as we talked about before, is the river discharge. The river discharge is calculated by multiplying the cross-sectional area of the river by the river's mean velocity or speed that it's traveling at any given point. So why do we need to do this? Well, simply put, uh, it helps us being able to find out the discharge patterns of a particular drainage basin. It helps predict flooding events, and it can therefore influence how we implement flood prevention measures. We cannot fully understand why a river floods unless we study its historical storm hydrograph. We start with the simple X and Y axes. On the X axis, we measure time, in this case in hours from the start of a rainstorm, and on the y-axis we measure discharge, the amount of water that is passing through uh, the river at any given point. Preceding most floods, we get a rainstorm or we get a, a certain amount of precipitation. This is plotted on the graph, as we can see, using bars to indicate the amount of rainfall and how long it took for that rainfall to reach the ground. We then plot the river discharge, which is represented by this U-shaped line graph. The first part of the line graph is shown with the rising limb. This is the rising level of water that is entering the river, either through overland flow or through through flow or even a groundwater flow. The top of the graph is the peak flow. This is the maximum discharge of the river and possibly the point where the water is going to break the river banks and we are going to get that flood. After the peak flow, we then get the receding limb or recession limb. This is the falling level of water inside the river after most of it has exited the channel and maybe drained into a sea or into a lake. The basin lag time is a very important number. It represents the time difference between peak precipitation time and also peak flow time on discharge. It's very important because the shorter the basin lag time, the more likely it is for the river to act in a very flashy way. And that means that the more water is going to enter the river faster, possibly breaking its banks, and therefore the more likely it is to flood. Our final storm hydrograph should look a little bit like this. It has all of the points plotted on it. 
and we can see that we've added the overland flow and the through flow. These are just the main constituent parts to what makes the full river discharge, how it gets to the river in other words, either overland or through the soil. And the total amount is what we call the storm flow. And the greater the storm flow is, the more likely it is for a river to flood. I'm now going to break down some of the theoretical reasons why uh, a river could flood and some of the factors that influence it. Now we're going to look at these in isolation, but it's very important to remember that when we're looking at a storm hydrograph, all factors must be considered together because they form the reason why this river might flood and how the storm hydrograph reacts across the whole channel. Overall, we're going to be looking at these main factors, area, shape, slope, rock type, soil, land use, drainage density, precipitation and temperature, and also the tidal conditions. These are the main factors, like I said before, that influence what the storm hydrograph does and how likely a river is to flood. There are two area factors that could affect a storm hydrograph. Firstly, a large drainage basin receives more precipitation than a smaller one because it has a larger surface runoff and potentially therefore a large drainage basin could flood because of that extra precipitation. Conversely though, a larger size could also mean a longer lag time. Therefore it's going to take longer for that water to travel the distance to reach the river and therefore it's less potentially likely to flood because of that longer time. The shape of the drainage basin can play a very important role in what the storm hydrograph looks like and how likely it is to flood. For example, if you look at the image and you can see a basin shape A, that is likely to have a very flashy system. You can see the storm hydrograph reacting very, very quickly, having a very short lag time. Basin B, on the other hand, that tapers off at the end. This also can have a quite a high peak but the high peak tends to uh, occur much, much later, and it might give us more warning to be able to react to a potential flood. And a basin that has a shape like, like C, in this case, maybe the river is less likely to flood because the two peaks um, occur one after the other, and therefore we don't get the sheer large degree of discharge that we would in A and B. If you also look at D and E, we can see in these images that a long drainage basin will have a very, very slow peak and it won't reach the river all at the same time, whereas a rounder shape will mean that it drains much faster and therefore it peaks earlier. The slope of a drainage basin has a very predictable impact on how quickly the water reaches the river. Uh, as we can see, the red image has a very, very steep slope, and that means that the water is going to reach the river faster, it's going to have a very steep rising limb and a shorter lag time. Whereas if we have a very gradual slope on a drainage basin, the water is going to take its time to be able to reach the river. Maybe there's going to be less overland flow and more through flow, and therefore, as we can see, the storm hydrograph is not as steep and the rising limb is much more gradual. The rock type that the river drainage basin is made from is also an influencing factor. So permeable rocks, they allow for rapid infiltration and very little overland flow. And that means that we have a very shallow rising limb and therefore the river is less likely to flood. If however, we have an impermeable rock, i.e. a rock that doesn't allow water to pass through it, then we're gonna get a ton of overland flow, a very fast rising limb and a potential for a flood. Apart from the underlying bedrock that we've just talked about, the soil that's laying on the surface can also be an influencing factor. And that influences the amount of water that infiltrates into the soil or enters the soil and how quickly that occurs. For example, if we're looking at a clay, which is um, quite impermeable 
and not very, very porous, this is going to create a much more surface runoff and therefore a shorter lag time. If, on the other hand, we have a sandy soil, uh, this is going to increase uh, the amount of infiltration and therefore we're going to have a much shallower rising limb and there's going to be less potential for flooding. Land use is also an important factor, or in other words, how people use the land. For example, any urbanized area is going to have a lot of impermeable surfaces through cement, concrete, and also tarmac, and therefore water is going to drain very, very quickly. We also have to remember that in urbanized environments, we are actively trying to reduce the amount of surface water that we have through storm drains. And these storm drains drain into the river, therefore increasing the rising limb and increasing the amount of discharge, reducing the lag time and potentially increasing the chance of flooding. If the land is also forested or used for agricultural purposes, this can also have an impact as well. In this image, we can see clearly the land use and how it affects the storm hydrograph. So a rural area that has a lot of vegetation, a lot of trees, is going to have a very low storm hydrograph, which means that the river is less likely to flood because the trees will intercept precipitation. They will also absorb some moisture and they will prevent a lot of overland flow. When you then add some suburban areas, say some small houses in a village, you can see that gradual increase in the storm hydrograph. And finally, we can see the rapid reaction that the impermeable surfaces have in a city, reducing the lag time, increasing the peak flow and making that river storm hydrograph much flashier and much more likely to flood. Drainage density in this instance is basically the amount of tributaries that a river will have that feed the main channel. And the larger the drainage density, the easier the water can access the main river channel and therefore potentially the shorter the lag time and the higher the peak of the river discharge. And we can see three different types of drainage density. We can see a fine, medium and coarse. Fine will obviously have the shortest lag time and coarse will have the longest lag time. We can see that in the graph um, where the river that has a large drainage density has a much flashier system than that with a lower drainage density. Precipitation and temperature. Precipitation is relatively obvious, at least on the surface. The more water we have, the more likely it is for a river to flood. Therefore, the more it rains, the more likely a flood is to occur. But also the type of rainfall is quite important. So short, intense rainstorms, they can produce a lot of rapid overland flow, and therefore they're more likely to cause river flooding. However, also long periods of continuous rainfall can saturate soils, and they can also potentially cause flooding much later. It's just not as sudden. Now the temperature, that's a little less obvious. If we have very high temperatures, um, this means that the soil surface can become compacted and can become hard and impermeable, increasing the amount of overland flow. Also though, very low temperatures can cause the surface of the soil to freeze, and therefore when it does potentially rain, that could also increase overland flow. Ideally, to reduce the chance of flooding, we just want a good average temperature that's going to allow soil permeability that's healthy for the vegetation and is going to increase soil porosity. The main purpose of a river is to be able to drain any precipitation or any water that's inside the system. And they drain into a sea or typically into a, a lake as well. So the tidal conditions that occur could affect the amount of drainage capacity that the river has. For example, during a high spring tide, when the sea level is much, much higher, this sea level is going to rise up the river, blocking its potential exit into the sea. This is going to create a backing up effect, very similar to a, say, maybe building a hydroelectric dam and that reservoir that forms behind it.
this is likely to potentially increase the chance of flooding. This is just a little bit of a reminder, even though we have looked at all of these influencing factors in isolation, they do impact each other and they can never purely be looked at in isolation. They can have various feedback mechanisms between them and one can make another one much worse. So for studying a whole river, you need to consider all of these factors before coming to some conclusion about how likely the river is to flood and also why it has flooded. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it educational. If you've enjoyed the content shown here today, please like the video. And if you'd like to see something similar, please subscribe for future videos. Thank you again for watching and have a very nice day.